chicken. You get your trusty chicken tender meal for seven bucks. Chicken's dry. When you can have a gourmet for this price right here, that's but cheaper. Chicken tender meals have seemed to become a staple. I respect that. Honestly, I do. Kind of boring. You get your fried chicken, fries, which oftentimes are soggy, and almost always disappointing coleslaw that isn't just bad, but it's like lukewarm. You know what happens to lukewarm mayo? Runny. You expect it to cling to the cabbage, but instead when you put it in your mouth, it just kind of drains into the back of your throat. Already, this is a very cheap meal. Not only are we gonna slash the price, but we're gonna make it the ideal meal that it should have been at the same time while keeping your wallet safe. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? Look, the best way to save money is to use what you already have. So although I always recommend making your own spice mix, unfortunately, the number of spices I would use here would make this, well, two to three bucks over what I want this to cost for you. So we went out and found a chicken seasoning that we thought tasted decent for about $2.78. And we're only gonna use some of it. Just make sure it has salt, and if it doesn't, well, salt it, please. Fried chicken without generous salt is like earth with no oxygen. First, let's talk chicken. Get yourself four boneless and skinless chicken breasts. Lightly pound them to flatten them and widen them slightly. Cut them into six strips each. That leaves you with 24 strips total, which comes up to about eight servings, depending on how much you eat. And these are hefty boys after frying. Separately mix together two cups or 475 milliliters of buttermilk and add two tablespoons or 22 grams of whichever chicken spice you have on hand. If it has salt, perfect. If it does not have salt, then add about one tablespoon or 14 grams of kosher salt along with that. Mix together, add your chicken strips, and let them marinate for at least 20 minutes in the fridge, but ideally overnight. Then go ahead and make your dredge by combining three cups or 450 grams of all-purpose flour, three and a half tablespoons or 40 grams of your chicken spice, again, if it doesn't have salt, then add about one and a half tablespoons or 23 grams of kosher salt in this. Whisk together, and uh, there you go. Start heating up a seven quart pot filled with about three quarts of vegetable oil to 350 Fahrenheit. Now, while that's going, instead of doing a little twirl around the kitchen, we're gonna make our slaw. In a medium sized bowl, slang in a quarter cup or 52 grams of mayo. Two green onions, thinly sliced, the zest of one lemon, salt and pep to taste, the juice of that same lemon. Wow, zero waste. Very nice. And four cloves of garlic grated. Mix it together, and your landing zone is prepared for your cabbage. So get half a head of green cabbage, and using a very sharp knife or a mandolin, slice this bad boy real thin. You know, the closer to paper, the better. Mandolin's gonna be a lot faster and easier for most of you, but be careful because it's the number one finger death trap I can think of. So many souls claimed the horror. Anyway, add your cabbage to the bowl, toss together, and season with additional salt if needed, and look at that. Oftentimes with a great slaw, less is more, and I can tell you now, this slaw proves that logic. Onto le poulet sauce. In a medium-sized bowl, add half a cup or 105 grams of mayo, a third cup or 90 grams of ketchup, fresh cracked black pepper, and salt to taste, three tablespoons or 43 grams of hot sauce, this is Cholula, two teaspoons or 10 grams of Worcestershire sauce, woo, getting good at that, two cloves of garlic grated, mix that together, and you have a chicken sauce. Do not at me with your Cane's bullshit. I know how to make a proper chicken sauce worthy of any chicken strip. Also, we have a Cane's, but better, so. Before we fry our poulet, Let's prep our fries. These are curly fries that are sort of like Arby's in the sense that they're lightly battered. Some say it's a no-no, but I don't really care because it's delicious. Now, you'll need five medium russet potatoes. No need to peel them. I do want to point out that you do not need to make these curly for this to work. You can make it into matchsticks. Please relax. But if you have a spiralizer, that is how you'll make them curly by using the curly fry attachment that comes with it, assuming you have one. So pop that bad boy on, let it rip, get all your goddamn curly boys. Then place all your processed potatoes in a bowl, cover with warm water, season the water generously with salt, and let us sit for about 15 to 20 minutes. Drain your potatoes, dry them as much as possible with towels or paper towels, toss the fries lightly with just a tiny pinch of all-purpose flour, and then in a separate large bowl, add in one cup of your dredge that you made earlier, plus one tablespoon or seven grams of paprika, first cracked black pepper, whisk together, then whisk in one and a half cups or 350 milliliters of water, and now we're ready to get cooking. First, your chicken. In batches, pull your chicken from the marinade, toss in your remaining two cups of dredge, shake off the excess, dip back into the marinade, and dredge one last time, really pack it on the flour so it adheres. Ears, okay? If you're double dredging and you have undredged parts of your chicken, let me tell you. I will ding dong your door and tell you that you're not getting a kiss. Shake up the excess and repeat with all of your chicken pieces. Now, once they're breaded, in two to three batches, fry your chicken for three to four minutes or until the internal temperature reaches 165 Fahrenheit and you have a beautifully flaky golden brown piece of chicken. Remove and place on a wire rack to cool, then immediately season very lightly with salt while still hot, and that's your chicken. Repeat with all your chicken, and once that's done, you're gonna wanna immediately jump onto your fries. In three to four batches, dunk your lightly starch-coated fries into your batter. Once everything is nicely coated, shake off the excess 
process and lay into your oil gently. Be careful. Fry for three to four minutes or until beautifully crispy and light golden brown. Remove, drain on a wire rack, and again, lightly season with salt while hot and repeat with the rest of your fries. Now, I know these cheat the fry system. I'm not mad. Matter of fact, I'm going to enjoy every culinary sinful crunch. Now, to assemble, get yourself a large plate or a quarter sheet tray lined with parchment. Get your slaw and a little ramekin, some of your chicken sauce in a separate one. Add on a generous layer of your crispy hot fries. Three pieces of your chicken, nicely aligned, and that is a beautiful chicken tender meal. Organized, clean cut, absolutely filled to the brim with flavor. And above all, for this price per person right here. Now let's taste test this and see if your tenders are a number one contender. Wow, here we are. Before we even start, listen, we've been seeing some people. Josh, there's no way that that costs that much. It cost me $25 to go get all this stuff. If you had to buy everything, yes. But the thing is, you buy a five pound bag of flour. Did you use that entire thing of flour? No, you can still use it again. You're only using a small portion. You can make this recipe probably multiple times. The point is to maximize flavor with technique using as little inexpensive ingredients as possible. And that's what we do. Right, first thing first, slaw. Often times. The simplicity of this actually makes this better. Look at this. Can we get a sound test? Good God. The flavor of this is immaculate. And I honestly didn't expect it to turn out so good. I oftentimes want to add a ton of ingredients to stuff and it's just not necessary. Oh, I didn't try these. Whoever said you shouldn't batter your fries should shut up. Is he goaded with the sauce? You can have the instant gratification of going to your favorite chicken shop. The freshness of getting this chicken and having the ultimate control for this price right here per serving still. It doesn't get any better than that. It just doesn't. And you could say you made it. You have a bad day. Go achieve something. You want to know what else tickles my tendies? B-roll. Okay, so we made our chicken tendy meal. <laughs> Are you tired of having tried chicken? I just wanna know. Honestly, at this point, forget everything else I was gonna say. I don't even care. We already know it's good. Chicken breast is single-handedly one of the most difficult foods to cook. Stop. Uh, and we had french fries. <laughs> I, we just, let's just leave this in because this is this is this is gonna be what it is. I am completely out of it. I did not have my coffee. I don't even know what year it is. I didn't have my coffee until ten. 30. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe for a coffee.